Let's keep analyzing the situation and see what happens to the horizontal distance that this block will travel as we alter some of these uh, parameters in this situation. So this, this is the distance there, the horizontal displacement. Uh, if we increase the spring constant k, we increase that, that means a larger k means more energy is stored. More spring potential energy is stored within the spring. So guess what that means? That means there's more energy in the system. So the block gets more kinetic energy by the time it reaches the edge of the table. And what's that going to do? Well, if you have more kinetic energy, that means you're going faster. And if you're going faster when you leave as a projectile, you're going farther. So this answer is going to be uh, a larger distance or a larger capital D. More distance will be covered. If we increase the spring's compression x, same thing. That means there's more spring potential energy. So uh, there'll be more kinetic energy by the time it gets to the end. More kinetic energy. More kinetic energy means faster and farther. So again, we have more displacement covered. If we increase the block's mass, what's going to happen? That means it's going to be harder to push this block, right? There's more inertia there. Inertia is the resistance to move. You have more mass, you have more inertia. So that means it's harder to get it moving, harder to move. So that means you'll be going slower by the edge of the table and you won't go as far. Less displacement. If we increase the platform's height, this means we take this H and we elevate it all the way up. You're going to allow for the block to be in the air longer. And as the block is in the air longer, remember you have a velocity in this direction and a velocity in this direction, or acceleration in this direction, really. So this is allowed to go farther, so that means you're going to be adding in more of these horizontal velocities the longer you're in the air, which means you're going to increase your displacement. More time, in air, so more displacement. And now the best part of this whole question, derive an expression for each of the following in terms of k, x, m, and h. So these are um, constraints for us. This is what we have to keep our answer in these terms, k, x, m, h. We shouldn't have anything else other than some constants. So like if g's there, that's no big deal. If you get uh, v or uh, a height measured in y, that's no good. It needs to be in h. All right, so we need to get the speed of the block upon reaching the, the table. A lot of students ask me, how can I be better at driving? Deriving just means to do it. Show the steps to. So don't just give me a blank answer. Show the steps to get there. I always say the first step in deriving an equation is to find an equation on the equation sheet and then make it match the situation. So in this situation, we have the spring being loaded. So I would say because this, um, this thing has a height, I'm already thinking about energy and it has a spring, so I'm already thinking of conservation of energy. I would say just go ahead and start with torque 
total energy in the beginning has to equal your total energy in the end. What kind of energies do I have in the beginning? I have just spring potential energy. Well, I have spring potential energy and gravitational potential energy, remember. And then in the end, I have kinetic energy plus my gravitational potential energy. I can remove those from each side, and what I'm left with is 1 half kx squared equals 1 half mv squared. And what are we solving for? The speed of the block as it reaches the end of the table. So now I would just solve for v. My 1 halves go away, and I get kx squared over m under the radical. That's it. I have now derived my equation. We did that already. We just didn't call it deriving. It's just show the steps to solve for this uh, variable and keep it in these constraints. Don't be intimidated by the word derive. Derive means that you get to do a problem without having to use your calculator. Okay, so the time that the block spends as a projectile, we did this already too. We already know. Right, so uh, time, projectile, if we need time and we're using projectile motion, then we go to the y equations. They say the displacement equals one half gt squared. Solve for t. t equals square root of 2y over g. That's it, right? No. Because what did I say? It's got to be in these terms. So that means t equals square root of 2h over g. That's the same exact thing. Yes, it is. But one of these answers will get you full points, and the other one will not. Make sure you look up to make sure that you are following the rules for your answer equation. Now, the distance the block travels as a projectile, x equals v naught x times t. We know t is this, so x, oh, and we got velocity as this equals the square root of kx squared all over m times square root 2h over g. Can you simplify that more? Maybe. I think that's just dandy. Leave it right there. Okay, now let's use our answer in part b to support our assertions in part a. If we increase the spring constant, What's going to happen to the distance? Well, look, if we increase the spring constant, it's in the numerator. K is in the numerator. So if we increase K, what happens to our velocity? Bigger K, bigger velocity, bigger displacement. Now, if we increase um, m right here, m is in the denominator, so that means more m, less distance. All we're doing is analyzing what's happening with our equation. I noticed the problem. Sorry, this should not be x. This should be d, capital D, right? How come you didn't yell at me? And the last two are both in the numerator, so if you make those two bigger, that means displacement becomes bigger. 